Today, we're going to be finding out what would happen if the Jurassic Park T-Rex was more scientifically accurate. I predict everyone's just going to die. In the 90s, everyone thought if you hold still, a T-Rex can't see you. That doesn't exist anymore. Now they have like hawk vision. I predict everyone's going to die. Subscribe to Goji Center for more epic videos like this. And right, let's get it going. Oh, damn, dude. Can what? nature produce something what? even more terrifying than fiction? What a plot Tyrannosaurus twist. Rex has been a cinematic icon of terror for millions, but might the real life creature surpass in Gen's creation? The T-Rex in the Jurassic franchise was largely accurate to the current understanding of the creature in the 1990s. However, 30 years of new discoveries oh God, and research so have old. changed the story of the most powerful predator North America has ever seen. In this episode, we will highlight some of the differences between the Tyrannosaurus of Jurassic Park and of the Cretaceous to identify six ways the real Tyrant Lizard King was more dangerous than was conceived in the mind of Michael Crichton. And six stick ways. around for That's a surprise crazy, bonus dude. segment where we shake up the formula on the film franchise. No way. <laughs> what an epic video. Goji Center, man, Number this channel's one, amazing. Agility. Was Rexy, for example, more agile than the real T-Rex? Figuring out how dinosaurs could though. move has largely only been something testable in Rexy the last few decades. Rexy is more agile. And the last few years have shown the assumption of Tyrannosaurus being speedy but slow to turn was dead wrong. What? In the Jurassic series, Tyrannosaurs are quick on their feet in thrilling scenes like the infamous car chase, but they are regularly outflanked. Raptors, humans, and even other giant carnivores have regularly been capable of getting around T-Rex, dodging their attacks, and in the latter case, toppling the tyrant reptiles. Well, it's such a big, silly, but goofy guy, you know? contrary to the idea that big creatures are sluggish animals, the real tyrant reptiles were not reckless bruisers, as once thought. Cutting-edge research such as a paper from 2019 found that the hip design in Tyrannosaurs especially were very well suited for quick turns and repositioning. Oh, really? Thanks to really? having evolved from small, nimble-footed predators having to navigate dense forests and uneven even terrain, even the largest Tyrannosaurus would be extremely agile for an animal its size, scoring over twice as high as other big predators with even less mass to move around. That's insane. Agility is not That's the same crazy. thing as running speed, and a fully grown T-Rex would be significantly slower than the car-chasing menace from the movies, but reality gives another workaround. No way, it's Juvenile slower? and sub-adult Rexes grew faster in height and length than they did in weight, spending over a decade as still large but but extremely fast and agile pursuit predators that could keep pace with a racehorse. That is These insane, growing though. tyrants could carve out niches all to themselves, pursuing quicker prey than their parents, and a human would be a near ideal meal for a growing T-Rex. That part from the end of the Lost World, the baby might have been even more predatory at an opportunity like that. Cutest damn baby in any this movie kind ever. Of behavior fits a portion from the Michael Crichton novel not adapted into the film. The novel featured two Tyrannosaurus an adult and a juvenile. The adult, not for lack of trying, actually doesn't kill anyone in the whole book, whereas the juvenile T-Rex rips a man limb from limb. Damn. Number two, eyesight. Eyesight, I knew it. Exactly I freaking knew it, man. Exactly what is going on with the eyesight of the Tyrannosaurus in the Jurassic Park franchise has been debated for decades. I feel like one thing, too, it could just be they had specifically bad eyesight because they weren't actually dinosaurs, like they were mixed with the DNA of other creatures. They're all... Every dinosaur in this franchise is a hybrid up until Dominion. It's, it's still, like, even if there's some raccoon DNA, it's a freaking hybrid, but maybe they're just like genetic, like, what's the word? Like when a Shih Tzu can barely breathe or anything and it's just been genetically morphed so much from a wolf that it doesn't function properly. Anymore. Maybe there's just a bunch of blind, like goofballs walking around. Three information. Several scenes imply the in-gen Rexes are capable of seeing stationary objects as food. Others show it cannot, or at the very least, cannot without the help of other senses like smell. So, we are instead going to look at the original intention by the makers of the series. In both the original film and the original novel, the in-gen Tyrannosaurus cannot see things that are not moving. In the movie, it is treated as an actual paleontological hypothesis, whereas the book implies it was a side effect of the frog. DNA splicing. That's what I'm saying. In the real world, however, this was never a seriously considered hypothesis, and the last decades have shown a wealth of information that Tyrannosaurus might well have had some of the best vision of any land animal to ever exist. And now Modern where we relatives are. relatives like crocodiles and birds are sight-based predators, using focused fields of vision to both track prey and gauge their strikes. This
This means their eyes also have to be attuned to rapid movement and focusing. One adaptation that helps with this is both eyes accustomed to light sensitivity, is but that also a motorcycle highly rabbit? developed fovea, <laughs> small depressions the inside hell? the back wall of the eye that sharpen focus. <laughs> Most animals have it, but in birds and crocodilians, the fovea is very developed to both help them strike at a target in ambush from close distance and track it's the a movement of a target rabbit. from afar. It's likely Tyrannosaurus had the same adaptation. A 2006 study followed up on in 2011 indicated Tyrannosaurus had a visual acuity comparable if not surpassing eagles. That's with a insane. binocular range That's of depth perception over right there. 55 degrees. This granted T-Rex the ability to both focus in on close-up objects and see nearly over three times further than a human can. That's While crazy! While designing the Tyrannosaurus for the films, the eyes were kept partially facing forwards, but not to the same degree, and with the snout being broadened compared to the real-life animal. This might explain some of the problems with the vision, as it would give the in-gen animals less binocular vision and potentially a blind spot due to the thick snout. That's so a true. A real Tyrannosaurus so could certainly see you when you were moving, and more likely than not would see you long before you saw them. Morning, noon, or night. That's crazy. Number three, size. Some franchise. Oh God, I bet to pause it. I gotta go pee. Size does matter, and you would think no, that the filmmakers doesn't. who created oversized Stegosaurus, Allosaurus, and Raptors for the film Those would have done the were same with kaiju, the T-Rex. Bro, they were Whilst kaiju. the adult Tyrannosaurus in the films do vary in size, they generally are longer and taller than most recorded specimens. Especially if we go off individuals like Big Edie and Rexy by the end of her tenure. God, I hate those nicknames so bad. Sorry, but Big Edie, come weight, on, man. One disparity what becomes very obvious. In Gen Cook up a bunch of lightweights. For the original film and all subsequent incarnations, the filmmakers modeled their T-Rexes after the most famous specimen at the American Natural History Museum. In the 1980s, this was the standard T-Rex for media and one of the largest well-studied specimens That's at the time. That's what's on my hand! The first trilogy's T-Rex being about 37 to 40 feet long and 6 to 7 tons it's was very close anymore. to accurate for the time. Since then, however, more material and more studies of even larger specimens like Sue and Scotty have shown that an adult T-Rex had the potential to Sue? become substantially more massive. Who the hell named it T-Rex Sue? I've, I've had it with this like community. Volumetric modeling, which can more accurately Sue? account for mass of things like soft tissue, have demonstrated some of the larger known Tyrannosaurus had the potential to nearly double some of the initial weights given early on in the franchise. Even at the largest we saw her, Rexy, by the time of the final movie, was usually given a weight between 8 to 9 tons, several tons lighter than the larger estimates for the current bigger well studied Specimens. I don't care. And Rexy while the is true perfect in an angel and can do no wrong. Is unknown, it is likely some lucky individuals got even larger. Damn. More mass would equate to superior durability and muscle force, meaning a real life Tyrannosaurus would be substantially harder to topple or wrestle down in a confrontation against a rival of similar size. Something the film Tyrannosaurs have a hard time with. Number Rexy four, is perfect, silence. you bastards! Later in this video, you'll find out why this section is important. <laughs> the T-Rex in the film franchise do have one consistency. Blair outrunning this T-Rex and I heels drove me crazy for like three makes years. For more dramatic cinema with the iconic footstep and thundering roar, but in terms of hunting and moving about with stealth, this causes huge problems. Tying in with the prior debate on the vision, it can be speculated that if in-gen T-Rexes have an easier time seeing a moving target, one reason they might roar constantly is to scare a stationary prey item into running so it can see them better, such as this infamous moment from the third movie. Nobody listened to Dr. Grant. There are Grant, a few times the, the in-gen animals are able to sneak around, but many of these are when the Tyrannosaurus isn't actively hunting, such as the sequence from Dominion of Rexy searching out a dead deer, or in The Lost World when the Buck and Doe Tyrannosaurus snuck up on the hunter camp investigating the smell of their infant. In almost every other instance, however, they stopped to roar before charging, like here in the beginning of Fallen Kingdom. 
The real T-Rex was not only much more stealthy, but furthermore, this thing would be silent virtually all of the time. That's so Large amazing, I love that. likely belonging to Tyrannosaurus Rex have been discovered and show the species had extensive wow, soft tissue padding hand. on the bottom of its feet, similar to animals such as elephants and tigers, both of which can be deceptively quiet even when not actively trying to be. The dense tissue would muffle the footsteps even over debris on the forest floor. Studies on the cochlea, a portion of the inner ear, also indicate Tyrannosaurus was very perceptive to low-frequency noises. Because large animals often produce low-frequency calls, it's likely Tyrannosaurus would be capable of vocalizing in a way a human couldn't even hear clearly, much like elephants. That's but so this creepy isn't to, to say think it about, wasn't dude. capable of roaring. Large birds and crocodilians are able to put out loud bellows and roars of their own, it's just that it would only do so when the situation called for it. If Hammond had stocked Isla Nublar with Sue, there wouldn't be any forewarning when she was coming. Sue. Number five, bite effectiveness. Sue. Now, I'm never gonna love that Jurassic name. Jurassic Park franchise do list the near legendary bite force Tyrannosaurus Rex had, but this comes off more as an attribute we are informed of rather than a feat shown on screen. That's Nearly so true. Every you never really see it go crazy. An adult Tyrannosaurus bites down on a large animal, even a throat bite, it is jostled off doesn't rend flesh or crush bone, and typically fails to do much damage. That's this such a good point right there. They nerfed the hell out of those T-Rex confrontation against other giant predators on screen, but something seems lacking. Seriously? It just so happens a design choice for the Tyrannosaurus' film appearance might actually explain this. Dr. Robert Baker, one of the paleontologists who was consulted by ILM when designing the Tyrannosaurus Roberts. for her big screen debut, noted that the designers did make use of most references he and his colleagues provided to oh, yeah, make the T-Rex for the film the back as accurate mouth. to understanding at the time as possible, with one big exception. The teeth. Yeah. Tyrannosaurus has very distinctive teeth amongst its own family. Serrated, well, there it slightly does. Well, that's the realistic one. thick as railroad spikes. These were optimally built for transferring immense bite forces into a target. Even if the Tyrannosaurus was forced to pull away, if it bit down on the limb or neck of a target, it would almost assuredly split bone and rend flesh before they could free themselves. Gnarly. Their teeth would not transfer these forces as efficiently, nor be able to secure as good of a hole. God, I love that Spinosaurus large so much. Like Giganotosaurus, which had a respectable bite force of their own, and teeth more optimized for shredding softer tissues. T-Rex is a different issue, though. But because thinner, more knife-like teeth were thought to look scarier on screen, that's exactly what the designers went with. That's and so true, because Tyrannosaurus it. relied on securing a good hold to apply the full crushing force of its bite, this means even if the film Tyrannosaurus could bite down as hard as a real life one of the same weight, it would have a much harder time hanging on and applying that force as effectively. Damn, Hollywood, you Number screwed six, over the T Rex. Temperament. This Temperament. might sound like a strange category, but it is a strange what category. Virtually every single time a Tyrannosaurus encounters another large dinosaur in the franchise the Spino in JP3, the Indominus in Jurassic World, and the Giga in Dominion and Prologue. The moment the Tyrannosaurus encountered them, the Rex became aggressive and started a fight they lost. I assume the it was like a territorial a thing, you know? The a fight in the franchise against another big carnivore often involved lots of outside complicating factors. This like, kind of crap pissed me off so much because that's how they like work up one of their new dinosaurs in a new movie is it could kill a T-Rex and it's like you can't build up the T-Rex as the legend and then have stuff I don't know it always like made me mad like, whenever they wanted us to fear anything they'd have it kill a T-Rex it's like pfft. the multi-dino melee and control chip situation in Camp Cretaceous or the Therizinosaurus and chance luck snagging Rexy the win in Dominion they certainly can win battles but most of the time they rush in and it doesn't end well for them. It's true. This aggression towards other large animals also appears to be nearly exclusive to Tyrannosaurus. The Dino Tracker website and other media found around the time of Dominion even lists Tyrannosaurus as extremely aggressive, much more so than other large carnivores like Giganotosaurus. The moment they see a potential rival, they rush in and start attacking, managing to land a few hits before getting overpowered. 
The real Tyrannosaurus absolutely did fight other dinosaurs, including a menagerie of formidable herbivores and its own kind. The most notable set of evidence supporting this is its the own following. Kind is gnarly. wounds on the face and body of multiple Tyrannosaurus specimens show clear signs of battle scars earned fighting the most dangerous predator in their time. Bro, archaeologists However, are insane. even if Tyrannosaurus How do you figure that was out? territorial towards outsiders, many of these wounds show signs of healing. A testament not only to the resilience of this apex predator, but also indicators that the fights were not necessarily reckless death brawls. The loser knew when to back off, and the winner knew not to be heedless. When you consider how many dangerous herbivores they would have to go up against the next time they got hungry and had to hunt, it makes sense to be careful and not rack up unnecessary wounds. That's a big thing With for this animals kind of people competition, don't get. By the time a Tyrannosaurus reached adulthood, they would have accumulated a wealth of experience telling them when to be careful and when to be aggressive. Yeah, you gotta Fatality know when to back certainly off. certainly did happen from time to time, but this coupled with Tyrannosaurus Jesus, having intelligence this at video. least on par with many modern predators indicates they were capable of knowing when to pick their fights. Consider that a real-life Tyrannosaurus took at least two decades to reach adult sizes, whereas the in-gen versions wow, had accelerated just like in the growth aisle. rates, putting them at near adult size within a fraction of that time. Development and experience would be two completely well, different on purpose. Games. They made them Strategy, so they grew up faster, but I'm sure Koshi Center knows aggression that. aggression are all things that nature's design cultivated better than in-gens. Bonus section. Yeah, now baby. That we've covered some of the differences. Let's consider some of the major changes that would have happened in the film franchise if we replaced the cinematic incarnation with a real-life Tyrannosaurus. This is because awesome. Because they are one of the best studied and complete specimens known, we will be using the Sioux specimen, giving us a T-Rex who is roughly 40 feet long, 12.5 <laughs> feet tall My voice has never made that noise before. Hips, and potentially breaking the scales at more than 10.5 tons. That was One, like the legitimate the sound chase. of being flabbergasted right there. One would there. think a slower Tyrannosaurus would make this scene safer. Unfortunately, not so much. With no booming footfalls to wake up Dr. Malcolm, he would have a much harder time noticing Sue returning That's and very wouldn't sexy be calling man out to the right others. There. The Tyrannosaurus, curious and hungry, would sneak back to the paddock area and have a nice meal. Dr. Malcolm is grabbed and pulverized by the time the car even gets started up. Damn. And if Sue is still hungry, Dr. No, Sattler and Muldoon sexy might find themselves in a dire situation. That'd be a happier Two, ending Raptor for Muldoon than what Rex. he got. With better eyesight and agility, Sue would have noticed the other raptor in the room a lot quicker. The big one likely wouldn't get the chance to pounce upon the Tyrannosaur back as she is grabbed and instantly crushed in gory display. With the full force of the jaws smashing down onto her body, the raptor's internal and potentially external Damn! pop like Holy a balloon. Crap balls. This would probably be a good chance for the humans to run. Three, if Spino it was some realistic Utah Raptors, so it'd be very Flashing different. forward to Jurassic Park 3, an accurate Tyrannosaurus would be a lot more cautious upon confronting an irate Spinosaurus. Interviews with the director of Camp Cretaceous note that the Spinosaurus has an extremely thick and resilient hide. Plus, that Spinosaurus, I gotta say, is basically an Indominus Rex. Everyone disagrees with me when I say it, but it's freaking giant, it's bipedal, it's got the use of its hands, like no giant biped, like Theropod has that ability. It's got abilities no other Another giant theropod has. It's basically a freak. It's a genetic monster. Possibly explaining why it's so easily shrugged off the bite from the Tyrannosaurus in the film. With the Spinosaurus up against a more experienced combatant, something however, like that could never exist in nature. It's too, it's too Sheer deadly. Bulk. Look at Even this guy. The Spinosaurus is taller and longer. It is several Maybe tons you could lighter kill that than the more I mean, stable and could kill much it. more massive Sue. A more careful combatant, the Tyrannosaurus baits an attack and counters with surprising agility. Yeah, I I don't know, this down definitely on the arms seems accurate. Or neck of the sail backed bruiser. Stockier teeth work in tandem with a monstrous bite force. Even that hide can only blunt so much force, especially because the Tyrannosaurus would be much harder to throw off thanks to a massive weight advantage and a firmer hold. This would have been crazy. And blood vessels explode, and the Spinosaurus would be wise to retreat. Four, Main Street Fight. Ooh. When confronted with the Indominus Rex, one of two things might happen. The less likely but still possible outcome is that the hybrid attempts to communicate with the T-Rex like she had the raptors, given this she would be does crazy. have some of the same genetic framework. Why did she However, do this? However, with how aggressive and wounded the hybrid was at this point anyways, the fight would still happen, but with a different aggressor. 
being faster and taller, yeah, it looks the like food at that point. to land multiple claw wounds on the Tyrannosaurus, but the stocky frame and robust gastralia and ribcage blunt the damage. Countering, the T-Rex would employ their enhanced agility and greater mass to avoid getting toppled and throw their full weight into the hybrid. This is Considering insane. the Indominus was knocked around repeatedly by a Rexy almost half this Tyrannosaurus's mass, the hybrid is not keeping their footing. Likely targeting the hybrid's weapons, Sue bites down hard on the first limb in grabbing range. With so much force and jaws that are not oh, letting go, early. the arm is instantly shattered, if not torn off. Oh, God. This fight Damn. won't end as quickly as it did in oh, Jurassic this would have World. Happened. Five Fallen Kingdom prologue. Feel like barely any blood in how this. much this unlucky individual didn't even notice Rexy sneaking up on him, and he's now dealing with a Tyrannosaurus who's much quieter and can see much better even in the rain. His chances of making it off the island alive sunk before the marine reptile even got involved. Instead of stopping to roar and giving him a chance to run, the hungry Sue would already be bearing down on him like a silent stalker from a slasher movie. This unlucky bastard is Damn. very. All the guts. Dead. Six Giga versus There's so many animated battles. This Moving is insane. Ahead to the final confrontations, the first interaction between the two we see on screen in the Biosyn Sanctuary might not even escalate to a full-on fight. Considering that the Giga was much less aggressive than the InGen T-Rex, the confrontation might change into just a brief struggle and the two mutually deciding to avoid each other. This is what if I'd the imagine because they wouldn't the eat each other. Does still not happen, worth the risk. The odds might be quite different, and the Giga would have a much messier battle on its hands. The Carnosaur would be longer and taller for better reach, but would have substantially less stability, uh, much less agility, and now the weight advantage would be reversed. Depending on which of the official stats are used, a large real-life Tyrannosaurus might be several tons heavier than the Biosyn Apex Predator. That's a lot a of weight. The between that the two up. that escalated would be an awesome sight to see, but one critical difference might swing the odds. In the battle against Rexy, the Giga often leveraged its greater weight and mass to swing her around once the Tyrannosaurus failed to grab on and counter. Against a much more stable, more Look agile, this and killing much machine heavier Sue, this monster. wouldn't work. You know? If Sue got the same moment Rexy did when she managed to bite down on the Giga's face, the more robust teeth and stockier frame of the real Tyrannosaurus would have inflicted a messy wound and likely resulted in the Giga instead getting thrown around. Oh, gnarly the place to bite, bro. What's good for it. It right will near run. the balls. Fatal or not, the true king of the tyrant reptiles would reign over the valley. T-Rexes are amazing, bro. My tattoo isn't even remotely accurate anymore, but I suppose, you know what? I'm just gonna say this tattoo is Rexy. That's what, that, that's how I'll maintain a coping mechanism. It's not, a, it's Rexy, you know? It's beautiful again. This is really great. It's a beautiful T-Rex tattoo. It, shut up. It still counts. This video was awesome, dude. Like, crazy scientific knowledge in my face and then, like, solid five minutes of animated battles. Goji Center is crazy, dude. I love this channel so freaking much. This video was perfect. I don't argue with any of it. A, a, a realistic T-Rex legit looks like it could do everything that was said in this video. Leave a like, subscribe, subscribe to Goji Center as well, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>